welcome to Plaster Negotiations, where none of the debates are legally binding. And here's your host, Mike Stotes. strand me there because they canceled my flight to Nashville, uh, which somehow would help me get here too. Neither here nor there. So anyway, I wound up on a United flight to Newark, New Jersey. And as I'm on the tarmac and landed, they're talking about how the air traffic control tower had a main waterline pipe break and now is completely shut down. And talking to Stosi, I'm like, but why does that matter? It's New Jersey. The entire state's a giant sewer anyway. Like, what's a little bit more water at this point? We can't do our jobs when we're just living in our house at that point. Is it too comfortable for them? I don't know. Personally, I, I view uh, flying to Tampa instead of Boston as an upgrade for you. Oh, 100%. Don't get me wrong. The issue is it was 30 degrees in Tampa. <laughs> it was the coldest winter they've had there, or the coldest week they've had there in like 100 years. For once, Tom Brady was glad that he was playing in the desert instead of home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of, are we? Do you want to go through this AB conversation real quick here, Stotesy? Speaking of Tampa, I mean, it is Monday, so we could just go ahead and get your AB update out of the way. <laughs> yeah, so huge news uh, in the AB case this week. Uh, the charges were dropped. AB is a free man. Now, with that, however, uh, unconfirmed on whether or not he's left his house yet. He may think it's a trap and may still be staying in there. Tried to Google it, couldn't find any answers. So don't know the actual answer to that on whether or not he's actually set foot outside of his house yet. But official from Tampa Bay Police Department, Antonio Brown, charges drop, free man. I've heard that Kanye West has been uh, dropping supply packages with the Red Baron flying over. <laughs> <laughs> his secret assistant slash love interest we've heard so much about, yay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. All right. Thanks for that. Um, and keep up with us. We'll send out those every Monday, of course. Cut that out of the episode and post it to the socials first. But that's neither here nor there now. Let's go ahead and get into our DOS boot topic of the week. And we were originally supposed to film this on December 23rd. I was with... so mad that I was going to miss this because I love Seinfeld. Yeah, yeah. And December 23rd, of course, for any of you Seinfeld fans out there is Festivus. So even though it's a couple days late, that's okay. We're normally a day late and dollar short anyway. So let's get into my favorite holiday Festivus and relate this top topic therein. Um, So the part of so if you're not not familiar with Festivus, um, holiday put up by Seinfeld in which there are three like big aspects to it alongside of the Festivus poll to counteract the negative effects of consumerism during the holidays. Uh, The airing of grievances being one, the feats of strength being two, and the Festivus feast. Dragon Wrangler, we'll start with you and we're going to go each one as its own topic then relate back and we're going to start with the airing of grievances in sport for the year 2022 hey floor's yours wrangler go ahead and talk about who needs a talking to in sports i think my biggest airing of grievances when it comes to sports right now is just the ncaa as an organization which again seems like low-lying fruit i know but we talk about fifa being the most corrupt organization in the world and it is don't get me wrong but a very very close second is the ncaa And, you know, you're just looking at everything going on with all that is college sports right now. But I think the biggest issue being the NIL deal. And so I I told Stokes this off the air the other day, but I read an article that Ohio State just lost a recruit to Georgia because Ohio State offered him a $750,000 signing bonus just to sign and be a Buckeye and then $500,000 a year in NIL rights. And they didn't get him because Georgia offered him $1.8 million to sign to play at Georgia and is offering him $800,000 a year to play at Georgia. And so I think just the, the idea behind the NIL makes sense. And I understand it to some extent, but the NCAA being the NCAA, it is way fucking out of control. Drake may just had an incredible season, you know, incredible redshirt freshman year for Carolina And he basically had to come out the other day and say, like, hey, two schools offered me $2 million to come play there, but I'm not leaving. Like, I'm at Carolina. I want to stay at Carolina. And then he basically said, like, the NIL is out of control. Somebody's got to fix it. Somebody's got to stop it. And then you just add to that the idea of USC and UCLA moving to the Big Ten, which geographically makes no sense whatsoever and essentially kills the Pac-12. And then the idea that we just can't figure out this fucking college football playoff. So you've announced you're going to go to 12 teams, but you don't know when. 
you're trying to speed it up for 2024, but the Rose Bowl doesn't want to get on board. Why should the Rose Bowl fucking matter? You're going to a 12 team playoff, cut the fucking bowls out altogether. Just go ahead and say, Hey, just like the FCS, the FCS doesn't have like the Wendy's Tostitos bowl of champions for a fucking semifinal game. They're like, no, it's the FCS semifinal. You need a fucking bowl. I get there's money there, but dude, the Rose Bowl doesn't want to get on board. Fuck them. Fuck them. It's that simple. So for me, my biggest errors of grievances is just how big of a shit show the NCAA has become. It's gotten worse than professional sports. The greed, the money has literally gotten worse than professional sports. And I understand there's a level to it of like, yeah, you know, these kids have to go there and they're not making money. People that fucking don't play sports in college don't make money by going to college. Why should the athletes? At the end of the day, if you go work in the dining hall, you get minimum wage. Give the college athletes minimum wage. Let them be work study kids. You want them to make money instead of fucking NIL deals? Let's go ahead and say, you know what? You're going to get paid the same as a kid peeling potatoes in the kitchen. You're getting $12 an hour being an NCAA athlete. Good for you. Every school across the board. Congratulations. So that's my biggest issue with college sports in 2022. All right. Grievances being aired. It's therapeutic. McChesney, what do you got for your airing of grievances? So uh, this one isn't isn't too surprising. Um, obviously, this Patriots season hasn't gone exactly the way I wanted it to for a multitude of different reasons. Um, one being that, again, our offensive play caller is a mediocre defensive coach at best who failed as a head coach and who only has a job because Bill Belichick let him. Um, he is... He has single-handedly regressed the most important player on our roster in Mac Jones, a second-year quarterback. We were paying first-round money, and every week we're seeing Mac Jones like lose his shit on the field, on the sideline, just freaking out because Matt Patricia doesn't know what he's doing. And as much as I want to like give a whole bunch of shit to Matt Patricia, which is well deserved, Matt Patricia sucks. Um, I mean, do you guys remember the story of him like cussing out reporters in Detroit because they didn't know when Ford Field was built? Um, or the story of how um, reporters questioned him on like fourth quarter calls. He's like, well, I have the best fourth quarter call in NFL history with the Malcolm Butler interception, which wasn't even his call. Um, so yeah, Matt Patricia, obviously just one of the worst human beings in the NFL right now. Uh, but the blame kind of falls on Bill Belichick. Okay. Bill thinks that he can do whatever he wants and it's going to work because he had it for 20 years and it worked. He made, he made the playoffs all but like two years. Um, I think people forget that um, the reason that he was able to kind of do whatever he wanted was one, because he had the greatest quarterback in NFL history that masked a lot of inefficiencies. And two, he actually had offensive coaches like doing offensive things, <laughs> you know, uh, Charlie Weiss, Josh McDaniels, Billy O'Brien, who is allegedly coming back next year. <clears throat> but no, this Patriots season has just been shambles because Belichick is just, you know, in-house hiring with all of his spots thinking that any coach can do anything because if you're a good coach you can coach anything this has obviously been proven not true and i'm pretty close to being on the bandwagon of let's fire belichick a take that i mm. thought was like really um premature back in like september but honestly if Kraft goes up to belichick this offseason and says hey how about we like, you know, not make ourselves look embarrassing on national television, get an offensive coordinator and just kind of fix this. And Bill says, no, it's going to work. Trust me. Get him out. Get him out. Mm. And let's hire Billy O'Brien as the head coach. I think Bill O'Brien's a fine head coach so long as you don't let him trade people like DeAndre Hopkins. But um, don't let him go for it on fourth and 26 from his own fucking side of the field with a 24 point lead in a playoff yeah. game. That, that's bad too. Um, but yeah, just. This Patriots season has just been totally backwards. And the fact that we're still in it is amazing to me and probably speaks to how uh, stupid other NFL teams are. And, you know, we're lucky to have Belichick, but at the same time, he's been our biggest detriment. So Dude, the fact that the Atlanta Falcons just got eliminated from playoff contention yesterday or two days ago shows how bad NFL head coaches are this year. I fully agree. Yeah. Nathaniel it's, Hackett couldn't even make it one year. Dude doesn't know how to use timeouts. <laughs> the dude had to hire somebody to call timeouts for him. It's the easiest part of head coaching. No, Is yeah, he also the get back coach? <laughs> the get back coach, timeout coach? Whoa, whoa, whoa well, coach, get, get, back, back, get back, the, get back, get back. The get back coach uh, uh, failed Sean McVay a couple weeks ago when he do, when he got hammered by a linebacker on the sideline. 
Yeah. Hey, you got to be on your toes. Get back coaches. Come on. You're getting paid millions of dollars to grab a dude by the belt and pull him backwards. Come on. Yeah, that, that, that's my think, typical spoiled Patriots take grievance. Do you think Cliff Kingsbury's get back coach grabs him by the croakies? <laughs> yes. I, 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 I missed yes. miss that part on hard knocks. <laughs> <laughs> which has been, trying to hide it. it's, it's the story nobody wants you to know but for what it's worth that hard knocks uh, series with the cardinals is really good it is turns out I love it. Is really bad at like i actually like cliff kingsbury he's kind of a stupid head coach but like as a guy i think he reminds me a lot of jeremy he's just like really chill about like everything hmm. yeah the difference is he goes out of his way to be a fucking tool <laughs> it's true uh so airing of grievances for sports 2022 um it's been a great year, you know, looking outside of football for me um, with the Padres and uh-huh. now with the offseason too, picking up everybody. It's been fantastic. Don't but remind my, me, Stokes. Well, I was going to say my grievance kind of is going against Red Sox fans right now. And Do it, it hurts because, um, you know, I worked in that organization <laughs> in the uh, farm system. And I saw Xander Bogarts come up through single A. So, you know, when the Padres picked him up, it's like, oh my God, what a great homecoming. I know but, this guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I sort of, I, I mean, I was closer to him than most human beings would ever get, I guess. But, um, with him? uh, no, not that we're allowed to talk about. So there were <laughs> NDAs involved, but, um, <laughs> yeah, Boston fans get over it. It's obvious that Boston's front office is awful right now. All right. Like, you don't have to stop me in the middle of the street to bitch at me just because I'm wearing a San Diego Padres hat that we stole Xander Bogarts. Maybe you should look at your front office and wonder why they only offered him what? It was like a $40 million deal. It was a one year deal, I saw. Oh, it was one year. It was like one year, thirty million or something that I saw on Twitter, Jesus. and like that was. And then Xander took it as a slap in the face, as he should. Mm-hmm. He should, so. yeah. So I think that's my only grievance right now. Um, well, no, that's a, that's a lie. Um, Aaron Rodgers needs to go away. There's there's a point with um, Packers quarterbacks where they obviously need to be put out to pasture. Let's just remember all the great things that Brett Favre did towards the end of his time with the Packers. You know, he was bitching, complaining. I don't know if I'm going to be back. And then he just shows up and he's like, <laughs> I'm from Mississippi. And then, um, yeah, and then robbing them also. But uh, I just see the same thing happening already with Aaron Rodgers. Um, there's, there's, there's seldom like any um, time where I see a quarterback sign a four year extension and I'm actively considering if he's going to be there next year. Yeah, this is like probably the only time in my lifetime where I'm like, his knee might not be there next year. And it was the same thing with Favre for years. It was, well, is he going to be back? Is he not going to be back? What what the hell's going on? And it's so eerily similar that, yeah. Just go out to Pat. Jordan Love, speaking of uh, Packers quarterbacks, the future of your franchise, sir? I uh, can't wait to see him hit the bricks, too. So, right. um, <laughs> Everyone in the organization, got it. <laughs> yeah, it, it's about time for uh, a little bit of cleaning house, if you will. Will Levi's to Green Bay? Is that the, is that the, uh, the chant I'm hearing? Mm, I say Levi's, but I'm pretty sure it's presented as Levis. Levis. But I, I say Levi's because, you know, the jeans. Hmm. Levi's, real comfortable, not Wrangler jeans. <laughs> All right. So they what... don't have Brett Favre sponsoring them, so I trust it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maxim won't uh, sponsor him either for some reason. Anyways, uh, let's go ahead and move on uh, to the feats of strength and what we're. Um, going to do for the feats of strength it's not like well i guess jeremy and i could wrestle but that would be really fucking weird um i'll referee not do that i'll let yeah. you take your shirt off bud uh yeah no i'm good um he'll be wearing like the kurt angle straps <laughs> <laughs> but for uh feats of strength well, the way we'll do it is the best fight <laughs> and we'll put fight in quotes um that you've seen this year it could be ufc fights a hockey fight um it, or it could be just like a Twitter spat or something. We'll even allow that. Um, the best fight of 2022. 
I'll go ahead and start this. Um, and, and I think my favorite fight of this year has been um, my personal fights with Davo Sweeney. Those are my favorites. <laughs> um, just because I feel like I'm finally winning. Finally <laughs> winning with this fuck. He's an idiot. And it's showing this year so much better. Oh, my gosh. And people are seeing it and they're like, uh, yeah, uh, name, image, and likeness of God. Fuck you, Dabo. And then, yeah, so I'm just really happy about that. Um, the, the tide is turning, and uh, one day Dabonius will be gone. I'm, I'm very, very confident in that now. McChesney, favorite fight of 2022. 2022. Yeah. Need more so my here. take changed. I was going to go with Mac Jones just going around, like, gooning people, kicking them in the balls, and, you know, chopping at people's ease like Eli Apple who Eli Apple probably deserved it but um so my ta- my uh, my favorite fight I think is going to be between two and both of them involve Tom Brady kind of actually um Tom Brady and tablets um, <laughs> going around spiking them throwing them on the ground destroying them um or um Tom Brady's little feud with Antonio Brown which is like just totally one-sided Antonio Brown just like leaking messages and um, that make Antonio Brown look bad. Don't even like they actually make Tom Brady look better. Mm. Which you know, Tom Brady's gotten under a lot of media flack this year for how you know he's not exactly looking like the best family man nowadays. Um, he got divorced. Um, he said a lot of weird things on uh, his uh, podcast with Jim Gray, who is basically just um an elderly Brady lackey. Um. <laughs> Like I think Jim Gray would marry Brady like today if he was interested. Mm. Um, but yeah, no, Antonio Brown's beef with uh, Tom Brady, the only man who would pound the table for him to have an NFL job. Mm-hmm. Just leaking messages like um, the the first one talking about how Brady's like, you know, oh, you know, you were so cool. You were like so great. You were doing so well until this certain point, And now you're acting like a total man child. Or then the message that came out like a week ago where he Brady's like pumping up, pumping up. Yeah, you know, you've been through some stuff, but we're going to go through it. You can call me whenever you need it. And obviously Antonio Brown in response freaks out on an NFL field, throwing his jersey into the crowds, throwing off his pads and like just streaking off MetLife Field. And then um, as soon as Brady and Giselle have rumors of divorce, AB is just, you know, this, Spewing off like the worst of memes and the worst of pictures on his Snapchat. Even he's not even on Twitter. He's doing it on Snapchat. Hmm. Like this shows you just you know how mentally cognitive this you know thirty three year old stuck stuck you know in a thirteen year old brain kind of uh, person we're dealing with. So CTE's a bitch, man, and I am. Yeah, sure he hasn't he been has the same it. since that Vontez perfect hit. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of like Cam Newton after that Super Bowl versus the Broncos when he got knocked into another dimension. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, it's, that was the game. He got knocked into another, another dimension in that game. I thought it was the week one of the following year. Oh, no, 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 no. I know he dealt with concussion issues that following season. Von Miller, uh, his mushroom stamp is still on Cam somewhere <laughs> for sure. And then TJ sure. Watt broke his shoulder so he couldn't even, you know, throw a football anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Overrated. Mm-hmm. That it is. Hand it off. So All, right. Awesome. All right, Dragon Wrangler. What is your favorite fight of 2022? I do like the A B against Brady fight. That is actually pretty entertaining. The pics the picks that Brown is continuously posting of him and Giselle is always very entertaining. Um, but for me, uh, going a different route, actually, I do think that a great fight this year would have been either me or Alonzo against any single person we challenge. But, you know, the two of us are combined like 137 and 0 right now. So I think that's pretty great. Hey, um, uh, between the three of us, 139 and 0. So. Let's Who did you challenge? Yeah. Uh, well, actually, I challenged an entire refing crew for <laughs> from FIFA um, at one point. So it's more than that. I mean, what was the other one, Dabo? Uh no who the hell was the other person probably should have been Dabo I thought it would have been Dabo too I actually don't know that we'll just say it's Dabo we'll say it's Dabo Dabo. Um, but for me fight of the year Kamzat Chemayev against Gilbert Burns Uh, great UFC fight from back in April Uh, Chemayev's challenging for the title now because he came out victorious in that fight but uh, 
a dude who's been kind of superhuman in his career is undefeated right now. Uh, was anything but superhuman against Gilbert Burns. Great fight. Both dudes came out bloodied. Both dudes almost got knocked out multiple times throughout the course of the fight. Decision went to Shmaev, but uh, best fight of the year by far. Burns versus Shmaev. Mm. Mm. Very good. And Dragon Wrangler will send it back to you to finish off the Festivus. Um Start us off on what our sports souls will be feasting on the most in 2023. Yeah, I think it's a two-parter for me. One is uh, just the continued resurgence of Michigan sports. It hits close to home for me, obviously. And, you know, obviously the Pistons are the Pistons. They're terrible this year, but they're getting good young players. Cunningham's pretty legit. Uh, Jalen Ivey's good. Um, you know, they're, they're coming along here with the young core, even though they're not there yet. The Lions, Dan Campbell's a pretty damn good coach. You know, they're going to wind up this season like 7-9, and 7-10, and 10, somewhere in that range, 8-9. and uh, eight and nine. But just the fact that they've won seven games this year is, you know, really a testament to, to Dan Campbell and what he's doing. And the fact that Jared Goff is a legitimate quarterback in the NFL at times, I'm not saying he is every week, but at times, um, you know. And all, they're still going to have a really high draft pick. Exactly. They're still mm-hmm. going to have a really high draft pick to put something around, you know, St. Brown, freaking golf, like they have a decent stable of running backs there. They're, they're, they're building, they're getting better and, you know, all power to them. Um, obviously the Red Wings are, are coming along this year. They're competing for a playoff spot right now. They just ended a six game losing streak, which knocked them out of the playoff spot, but they're, they're fighting their way back. Billy Huso's having a great year. Uh, Dominic Kublik doing a great job there coming out from Chicago on a great contract. Um, and, and Eisman's building in the, you know, what he did down in Tampa, he's doing in Detroit right now. They're, they're a couple years away from being a powerhouse again. Um, and then baseball, the Tigers are the Tigers. They fucking suck, but that's okay. Um, and then, obviously, the University of Michigan, you know, and, and Harbaugh. I mean, I was one of the guys a couple years ago who wanted his head on a platter, wanted him out, but he's really turned him around. College football playoff two years in a row is, is impressive and assessment to what he's done because he's not getting the number one recruiting class in the country any year. Alabama's out recruiting him, and yet they're in this year, and Bama's not. Um, And then the second part kind of goes with that for me, but uh, you know, I'm going to be feasting on just BCS actually fucking figuring out how to make this 12 team playoff happen. It is so far overdue. The bullshit reasons they've given for the last 10 years on why it can't happen are stupid because the FCS has been doing what a 32 team playoff or 16 team playoff for years now. So you can't (laughs) tell me that we can't put a 12 team playoff at the division one level when it already happens. So just them getting all that straightened out for hopefully 24, I think is what they're shooting for right now. Um, but if we can get that all locked out, it should have been 12 team playoff years ago. So just seeing them actually officially lock that in is what I'm going to be feasting on in 23. Mm. Very nice. McChesney, what are you going to be feasting on in 2023? Um, Hopefully the, uh, when the Red Sox get sold by the, uh, the Fenway group, um and Heimblum gets fired. The Fenway group would sell their biggest asset. <laughs> I mean, I would pray. I mean, I can pray, okay? You can. Um, you can. But no. Um I don't know, it's hard for me to feast cuz I'm just so spoiled. I mean, you know, even the teams that I don't like around here are good, like the Boston Celtics. Like I I can't even say that I'm feasting on Celtics fans because they're kind of shaking their ass in my face right now after I told them that this team won't win anything ever. Um, uh, but I guess the number one thing is, uh, hopefully Matt Patricia is gone. I'll be feasting on the remains of his career. And hopefully if Bill Belichick tries to do something, him too, uh, hopefully just the resurgence of a youth movement in the Patriots coaching court, because God, they need it. Turnover feasting on turnovers, sort of pun intended there. What I'll be feasting on. More of the San Diego goose, baby. <laughs> we got a team of short stops. I love it. I fucking love it. I mean, we have the two best, youngest players in the game between a hopefully not riding out current <coughs> Fernando Tatis. Jr. Or riding a motorcycle. Or yeah, keep him away from those two. Um, and Juan Soto, who it appears we're going to re-sign because he did. Holy sh- I totally forgot that you got Juan Soto. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and he helped recruit Xander over to the Padres. Like, he was very vocal about that on uh, social media to try Any and chance get Xander it. plays DH? Uh, yes, I would think so. I mean, I, That would be the move I would do. If we kept him, that's what I wanted to do because we lost JD. I'm like, hey, you put Xander right at DH. I mean, this works but because he can't play defense. 
Uh, yeah, <laughs> he is a liability there. But um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, with Tatis coming out, oh, I'm <laughs> I'm only a shortstop now, and all that BS. It's like, come on, man. Like defensively, you are a firm second. Your bat is what's a hell of a lot better, and there's holes to fill in the outfield with the departure of Will Myers, um, as well as Jerks and Profar. But still, going to be feasting on what um, a Major League Baseball writer called a team that elevated from good to great for next season. That's going to be a They're feast good. in and of itself. They'll be early what? favorites for sure. They were good. <laughs> yeah, last year we were good. Yeah. 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 Believe it or not. Not. I mean, you know, don't watch the Philly games, but, you know, other than that, we did pretty good. Got an unofficial mascot. It's true. And with that, we're going to go ahead and take a break. But coming up, the gang runs through our Giuseppe Stromboli redo of the week. Yeah. And it has to do with the furriest Kansas City fan of them all. The super chief guy. He dresses like a furry. We're going to talk about him on the other side of the break. You're listening to Plaster Negotiations. I'm actually excited about this, Giuseppe. I think it's going to be a pretty good one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you... You kind of proposed it. So. That's part of why I'm excited about it, but it's going to be a good one either way. McChesney, we'll start with you for it. Jeremy, you need any beers or anything? <sighs> no, I just cracked up in this wicked hazy. I'm good. Ooh. I'm just trying to read through this just to make sure I understand it. Yep. Basically, dude on his way to a game in his costume robbed a bank in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Instead of perpetrating, how would you, as Tulsa teacher credit, you anticipate this furry attack and stop it sooner? <laughs> oh god i wish i was more creative <laughs> i'm a little too sober for it i feel like my answers would be better if i was way more drunk but we're gonna make this happen anyway we're good to go how do you stop <clears throat> how do you stop a furry from robbing a bank i, mean, I think there's a lot of ways you do that Okay, I, I mean, I I'm, I don't love this answer, but I have one. You have another couple minutes here. Keep thinking. Oh, the stuff's left. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You went to get a beer. Yeah, fuck that guy. Fuck that guy. Uh, Did you see the video of that Vegas fan uh, chirping that Patriots fan last week and then the dudes at the game uh, mm-hmm. the other day? Sure did. I told, my, I told my buddy Ryan, he went to the Colts game last year and Colts fans were chirping him all night long. I'm like, dude, you should have had that recorded. You could have sat with Kraft. <laughs> but then but then Ryan wouldn't have like enjoyed it because he's like, well, I wish Tom Brady was here. Hey, Kraft, he made the wrong decision. You should have chose Brady. <laughs> They made the wrong decision. They should have chose Jim G. <laughs> way more good looking. So true. I've been saying this since 2017. I've never doubted it for a second. Brady never did underwear modeling, just saying. Well, I'm sure he tried on Instagram, but you know how that goes. He actually did. But wow, it, I was, it was shot it was, in the dark. It was his underwear, <laughs> but it was a, it was like his Brady brand underwear, but it was a different person wearing it. Did, did he yeah, call Brady him Brady brand underwear, clearly? <laughs> did, did he call him Brady briefs? Dude, if he didn't, he missed a serious he opportunity. He missed a serious opportunity. <laughs> Brady Briefs. Uh, that might be too close to Brady Breeze. <laughs> you see that video of uh, Drew Brees? Drew Brees getting struck by lightning. Yeah. And it Ooh. came out as like a, a fake. Mm-hmm. Just a publicity stunt. People took it serious. People really thought it happened. I was like, yes! <laughs> <laughs> but... I was not that fortunate. Mm. I, I I have a I have an answer. It's not great, but it's okay. One for Giuseppe. Yeah. I'm gonna, but then we're getting me out of the way I'm first because you guys probably have better answers than me. I'm gonna keep my trend here of having two answers. So <clears throat> that works. All right, we ready? Yep. God, there's no Alonzo. Oh well. All right. It's Three. Dry. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. I <laughs> should have just used that one. All right, three. And now it's time. 
Britain. In honor of the phenomenal rebranding of a magic story out of the UK turned Italian-American bang noodle wielding and probably from New Jersey wizard. Did you see him at Newark the other day, by the way, Jeremy? Giuseppe? No, uh, I think he was actually in the tower. Ah, yeah, he's probably the one that busted that pipe. Our next segment is the Giuseppe Strombole Redo of the Week. Yeah. And he's obviously not a plumber if he was in the Newark Tower. The premise is simple. Give a scenario to the panel in recent memory. Panel determines how they would change the execution of the plan. Doing or not doing the scenario is not an option. This one came from Jeremy this week, and it's good. While traveling with a team to a new city, you do all sorts of things, right? You take in the local cuisine. You try out some breweries. You get a gun and try and rob a bank. Stop me if you've done this one before. Oh, actually, but... no. Oh, <laughs> shit, okay. Um, That last one should sound weird if you're a sane, rational human being, because you're not supposed to do that. But Chief Aholic Xavier Babadur, or however the fuck you say that name, uh, did just that he got a gun and tried to rob a bank allegedly allegedly heading to the chiefs week 15 match up against houston uh the furry man decided to get his gun and try and rob the tulsa teachers credit union on december 16th uh to top it all off he wore the damn furry outfit so, like, if you've ever seen, you know, the chiefs holic like, some, um, like, disheveled-looking dog thing <laughs> running around, that's him. Or was him. chief holic uh, is about to be brewing some of his own prison swill as he is facing $200,000 bond and potentially a lifetime sentence for armed robbery of a fucking bank, moron. This week, we're going to mix it up. Instead of perpetrating... Um, the crime how would you as the tulsa teachers credit union anticipate this furry attack and stop it sooner mcchesney we'll start with you all right so who do you think is like the greatest you know investigative cop in a movie you've ever seen like who played him batman jackie chan no mark Wahlberg. (laughs) <laughs> yes we just watched the other guys too <laughs> so we are going to hire mark Wahlberg, and i guess instead of the other guys we'll bring in will ferrell too he has a big movie out spirited with ryan reynolds nickelback made a song for it it was great um so we're gonna hire mark Wahlberg and will ferrell to do a little bit of investigative research on this kansas city crowd coming in because we know they're wild they're crazy and uh, obviously this big furry suit is gonna you know pop out to Will Ferrell. He's like, oh my God, I had that once in college. Um, Back when, you know, it it was right next to his gator suit. Um, But yeah, we're going to hire. Gator don't take no shit. uh, It's never been about no shit. But no, we're going to hire them. This this furry suit's going to spin out and they're obviously going to concoct this plan to catch this this furry before he goes in and robs the bank. Um, That plan being... They're going to have a big like bear trap in this, in the you know, in, at the front doors, you know, and have the have the bank closed because you know why why wouldn't they? This is this is a movie. This isn't real life. Okay, they're gonna have the bank closed in anticipation of this bank robbery. And Mark Wahlberg and Will Ferrell are gonna be sitting there arguing over if Will Ferrell's wife is hot or not. And boom, <laughs> there it goes. The furry gets his leg chopped, and it's all good. Gonna be doing a bank pop up in here. Gator don't take no shit. Gator needs a clock. The gang needs a refill. But when we come back, we'll get into our Giuseppe Stromboli redo of the week. You're listening to Plaster Negotiations. Follow us on the social medias at PlasterPod. And we'll be right back. Safe's never going to get open. And truthfully, they might just have to shut the bank down for a few days. I doubt that many people in Tulsa, Oklahoma could do that either. Um, I was born in Kansas City, Missouri, so I can say this. We're not going to fight with anybody. We're, we're good to go. So um, Missouri yeah. side would be able to do this, though, right? Uh, 20%. But by that point in time, 
uh, it's too late going. to call in the reinforces. Yeah, they're not. They're the ones that aren't going to the Tulsa, Oklahoma Credit Union. Um, they're the ones that are just driving straight down to Houston. So they'll be good. <laughs> um, so my second part of this, though, which I think is probably the better option, for being honest here. So sometimes I do a little bit of research going into the show, which I know is hard to believe since my facts are sometimes wrong, sometimes right. So there is a subset that is not the same uh, of furries who are known as bronies. They're fans of the show, oh, My God. Little Pony. Oh, you just gave me a oh. wicked episode of PTSD, Jeremy. Now, how does this become relevant here? Well, very simple. Apparently, if there's one thing furries don't want to associate with, it's bronies. Uh, while they have a really weird, fucked up sex life where they basically just bang each other in their chief holic wolf costume, uh, they don't want to be associated with banging horses. So... What you do when you hear that there's a, a bunch of furries from Kansas City coming to your city is you hire a brony with a little tail sticking out just to stand at the door. He doesn't even have to be a security guard. He's just hanging out there. And as Chief Aholic's walking up to the door and sees this dude in this tail, he's like, holy shit, I know I have a fucked up weird sex fetish life. I don't want to be associated with that guy. No way in hell. No way in hell. And so what happens as a result then is this dude doesn't even bother to try to go into the bank. He keeps right on driving. He's like, I'm leaving Tulsa. I'm going to a more civilized city where people don't fuck horses. And then winds up in Texas where, well, it kind of depends on the city there. But I'd like to think in Houston, they probably don't. So we're good to go. Uh, and that's a win across the board right there. Um, as Stoats just walked away to presumably get another beer. But that's my Giuseppe redo of the week as we wait on Stoats to come back. Hurry up. I'm done. Yeah, so uh, the Missouri side would be a little bit more of a challenge, don't you think? I do, but it'd still be like, I don't know, trying to play like connect four with like four hands. Um, like, instead of, like instead of a bank robbery, the, the Missouri side is just going to cause a traffic jam on the way to Houston. <laughs> They're, they're going to cause a traffic jam, and then they're probably going to try to steal, like, your cows. So, I mean, you might want to lock your cows away. They're probably not going to try to steal a bank. I mean, you know, you might, like, lose a couple goats here and there. But, I mean, at the end of the day, it's not because they're going to try to have sex with it. Like, they're not going to go full brownie on it, so you're good to go. Like, like Either way, if your cows get taken, they'll have a great life of pasture out in uh, Kansas City. Are there any other Tulsas in America? It's a great question. Because like I'm thinking that my my Mark Wahlberg Will Ferrell plan, they might show up for the wrong Tulsa. <laughs> I'm trying to Google right now and see. Like, is there a Tulsa in Texas? There is only a Tulsa, Oklahoma. There is only a Tulsa, Oklahoma. How about there's that? Only a Tulsa, Oklahoma, which is weird since there's a Paris, there's a West Paris, uh, but there's only one Tulsa. Figure that one out. No, wait, there is a Tulsa, Texas. What? No. Yeah. I'm looking right at it. That can't be true. It's like it's like right next to um you know in Texas where it has like the backwards L. Yeah. It's like right on the corner. Huh. Actually, you're right. Texasescapes.com says named for the Oklahoma capital and Boomtown, where they had oil wells on the state capital grounds. Tulsa, Texas never came close to rivaling his namesake. Huh. Yeah, so I'm thinking maybe maybe Will Ferrell and Mark Wahlberg show up to the Ron Bank. Um, hang on, I'm not entirely sure that it still exists though. Maybe it doesn't exist anymore. Texas State Historical Association in 1995 said Tulsa was southeast of Wink in southern Winkler County. <laughs> was yeah, exactly. So what is what is it now? I don't know. I'm trying to figure that out as we go here. There's I mean, this would, it would be totally in Will Ferrell's character's wheelhouse if he shows up with like a map from like the 1880s. Yeah, all I can find out is that there was a city called Tulsa, Texas. It's hard to say that it still exists right now. I don't think it still does. I think it's no longer a city. Does Tulsa, Texas still exist? I think it was in like the 1930s, and I think now it's just completely gone off the map. Yeah, 1926. Huh. So there used to be a Tulsa, Texas. Not anymore. What do you know? <clears throat> I hear still uh, Oh yeah. Yeah, oh, it yeah. just vanished after the night after 1948. Uh, the store, one of the stores in Texas, in this town, closed, and the community, uh, which was named for the Oklahoma boomtown, vanished. 
<laughs> so like a Walmart shut down and that was 90% of their jobs and entire infrastructure just crumbled. <laughs> they all had to leave. Now it's just desert. <laughs> one giant uh, freaking bush. One uh, fucking bush just came through and wiped out the entire town. Hate it when that happens. You missed the interesting conversations, don't you? <laughs> oh, I'm sure I'll be able to go back and see it. And delete it, yep. <laughs> and delete it? Yeah. That bad? No, it wasn't bad. There's a lot of downtime there. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. This hangover sucks. All right. Getting back to it. How are we going to start the stop the furry before it even happens? Baronies. Baronies was an option. Here's another option for you. Robocop. I mean, fucking Detroit's Robocop. Not a more developed city than Tulsa. He might enjoy it there. He, he might. He might. You know, I mean, probably better weather, you know, other than the tornadoes. But um, yeah, I mean, you just you get the cop that tries to stop crime before it even happens, you know. And uh, so Chief's a holic. I mean, he's not even getting out of Kansas City or Missouri or whichever Kansas, Missouri side he's on. So that's how you do it. You just hire Robocop. Come on, Tulsa Teachers Credit Union. Listen to what I say. One more break to come up, but when we come back, there our panelists give their Alex Moran Player of the Week nominations. You're listening to Plaster Negotiations. Follow us on the social medias, and we'll be right back. Yeah, there was a town called Tulsa, Texas. No, it doesn't exist. Hmm. That was the gist of our conversation. I said that Will Ferrell and Mark Wahlberg would go to the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably not wrong. Probably not wrong. Uh, let's see. I do not have an Alex Moran. Uh-uh. You guys? Uh, I have an Alex Moran. I'm pretty happy about it. I told you about it yesterday. Yeah. Dude, I don't remember anything from yesterday. Yeah, that's fair. I'm sure I could find one. Yeah. I mean, seriously, would it, would it hurt if I didn't t- take out that spot? I think you're better off taking it out, but I mean... Uh, we'll it. <laughs> Make All a right. judgment call. Yep. Make an assessment. All right. God, there's like nothing to pick from. Oh, okay. I guess I, guess I can kind of go on a little little thing about... Yeah, I got it. You got it? Yeah. Okay. My brother for Christmas got me like this huge thing of Swedish fish. Nice. That is awesome. And like, yeah, I'm literally just going to puke this all up eventually, but. That's all right. Here for a good time, not a long time. Damn right. All right. <clears throat> Fuck it, I'm just gonna say it for sake of saying it. Alright, you guys ready? Yep. Cool. Three. All right, welcome back to Plaster Negotiations, where none of the debates are legally binding. Each week we ask our panelists to find what we call the Alex Moran player of the week. Criteria is simple. We're looking for an individual who wants to live their best life, the true backup life, all the glory, none of the work. McChesney, who is your nomination for the Alex Moran player of the week? So after getting um, absolutely obliterated 51 to 14 on uh, Christmas Day on national television on Nickelodeon, where Patrick Starr is literally chirping you on national television. <laughs> Uh, Nathaniel Hackett, step right up. You are this week's uh, Alex Moran player of the week. You didn't even try to game plan last week. You just said, well, I'm out of here anyway. We might as well uh, let Cam Akers have a legacy game. Thank you very much for my fantasy win. Um, Championships, baby. Um, But yeah, no, uh, Nathaniel Hackett couldn't hack it as an NFL coach. He doesn't even see the end of his 
of his first year. He is only the fifth head coach to do so. And he absolutely phoned it in on what he probably knew was his last game. I'm pretty I'm, I'm sure that he wouldn't have, you know, been that bad and, you know, displayed that trash of, you know, a game plan against Baker Mayfield and the Los Angeles Rams if he had anything to play for. Mm. And he didn't even have job security to play for, I guess. So. Daniel Hackett, enjoy your pension. You will probably be paid uh, millions and millions and millions of dollars over the next couple of years for doing absolutely nothing. Um, Yeah, good job. Excellent work. Excellent work. All right, Dragon Wrangler, who is your nomination for the Alex Murray Player of the Week? (laughs) So I'm going to read off a couple stats to you guys here real quick and then tie it all together. So one of these players is from... Uh, Wiley High School in Abilene, Texas, and is a two-star recruit coming out of high school. And in his five-year career, uh, 1,546 for 2,229 for 19,217 yards, 155 touchdowns, 46 picks, and rushing 300 attempts for 897 yards and 23 touchdowns. The other one, a former number one recruit in the country, Out of uh, Irvine, California, sorry, Santa Ana, California, modern day high school, one of the top college or high school football programs in America. Uh, And in his college career, over the course of five years, his cumulative statistics are 589 for 937, 6,947 yards, 45 touchdowns, 25 picks, uh, 92 rushes for negative 295 yards and one touchdown. If you guess the former to be Case Keenum, you're correct. If you guessed the latter to be JT Daniels, also correct. Now, the reason I bring up JT Daniels is because he made an announcement this week that for his sixth year of football in the college level, he's transferring to Rice University, a school who hasn't been to a bowl game uh, other than this year where they're five and eight and made a bowl game in as long as I can remember. A school that's been to 12 bowl games in the history of their program since 1938. Now, let's give a little backstory here on the history of JT Daniels. So, Number one recruit in the nation, five-star recruit, coming out of high school, pretty big deal. Winds up going to USC, starts as a freshman. Wins out the competition, uh, winds up throwing for 2,600 yards, 14 touchdowns, 10 picks, and then missed a game with concussion, whatever. So goes into his second year, won the starting job, tears his ACL in the season opener, loses out to Keaton Slovis, who is their starting quarterback to follow. So USC legend Keaton Slovis. Yep. So transfers to the University of Georgia, school number two for keeping track here, goes to the University of Georgia, loses to Dewan Mathis in a quarterback competition to start the season, winds up getting put in there as a starter, does all right, does fine, winds up going into a position where he is 80 for 119, 1,231 yards, 10 touchdowns, two picks in and out of the starting lineup. Okay. Not bad. Goes into 2021. In 2021, uh, winds up being the backup to anybody, anybody, Keon Slovis, <laughs> Stetson Bennett. Close, so oh, yeah, winds up he's the backup, he's not going <laughs> to beat out Stetson Bennett. Transfers to West Virginia, thinks, okay, well, you know, if I'm trying to play at a power five school, let's go to the smallest of power five conferences, arguably uh, in the Big 12. So, winds up starter, starts first. One more break to go, but when we come back, the gang runs through their Alex Moran Player of the Week nominations. You're not going to want to miss it. Stay tuned for more Plaster Negotiations. Tell us to say this is stupid. Yeah, so what you're saying is Patricia's offense is too complicated. It makes sense. No, it's too it's too simple, and Bailey gets it because it's too simple. So that it's... Mac, like, Jones, uh, Mac Jones knows it's wrong. Sounds like Mac Jones needs to stop questioning authority is what I'm hearing out of this. You think he questions? That's, that's the way that Bill Belichick would prefer it, yes. That's the way Bill Belichick would prefer it, yeah. If he, I think if Mac he Jones listen. ever went up to uh, Nick Saban, who failed as an NFL head coach, was like, hey, coach, I know we're going to run this, but uh, fuck you, no, we're not. <laughs> well, I mean, Nick, Nick Saban isn't exactly Matt Patricia. True. Maybe a little better in a little respect. I would hope. I, would, I mean, I wouldn't go and play if I was getting recruited. Like similar schools well, on one side, Saban on on the other side is Patricia. I have a feeling that Saban's going to win 
you know, Dude, nine Patricia out of 10 gives off the vibes that he like takes a giant shit in your toilet and doesn't flush when he leaves. Yeah, yeah, and he dresses that way too. So <laughs> yeah. Unwelcome house guest. But with that, we thank you for joining us for this week's rendition of Plaster Negotiations. And again, nothing we said was legally <coughs> binding. As always, 21 means 21. Designated driver, drink responsibly. And above all else, don't be sons of bitches in 2023. Be good people. On behalf of Caleb McChesney and the Dragon Wrangler, Jeremy Phelps, I've been Mike Stotes. Thank you for tuning in. And we will be back hopefully this week with another episode. We'll talk to you soon. We appreciate you tuning in for this week's rendition of Plaster Negotiations. And again, nothing that was said was legally binding. We look forward to seeing you all again next week. Follow us on the social medias and we'll talk to you soon.